Welcome to this edition of the Native News Update. I'm your host for today's program, Paul DeMain. Many of the stories and information found here can be found at our website as well at IndianCountryNews.com where your online membership and or donation helps support the development of this television station. Here's the news from the day from the Associated Press and other Native American news sources. Authorities say the bodies of two missing Wakpala, South Dakota teens were found in north central South Dakota. The Bureau of Indian Affairs said the bodies of 17-year-old Mariah Roundtree and 16-year-old Jalen Millett were found late Sunday. They were last seen on February 8th between Promise and Whitehorse, South Dakota. Their abandoned car was found stuck in the mud a few days later. A former pharmacist for Chickasaw Nation Health Services has pled guilty to stealing $150,000 worth of drugs from the tribe's pharmacy. Hugh Edward Work of Lindsay pled guilty last Friday in federal court in Muskogee, uh, Oklahoma to federal embezzlement charges. A sentencing date has not been set, but the 32-year-old faces up to five years in prison and could be fined up to $250,000. U.S. Attorney Sheldon J. Sperling said work in 2005 stole drugs and supplies belonging to Carl Albert Indian Health Care Center and the Chickasaw Nation. The Cayuga Nation cannot continue selling untaxed cigarettes to non-Indians at its two upstate uh, New York stores, a state judge has ruled. In a decision released last week, State Supreme Court Justice Kenneth Fish Fisher said the Cayuga must obey his earlier order blocking the sales at the Lakeside Trading Stores in uh, Union Springs and Seneca Falls until a dispute with county officials is fully reviewed by an appellate court. The Cayuga will appeal Fisher's ruling, said Lee Alcott, a tribal attorney. The decision fails to recognize the root of the problem, which is that until Indian tax exemption coupons are issued, there is no way for the nation to determine whether it's selling to Indians or non-Indians, which was precisely the issue the appellate court has resolved in the nation's favor, Elcott said. The state has not put in place the coupon system that will exempt Indians from cigarette taxes. The a state appeals court has barred the state from enforcing this tax law until the coupons are made available. Alcott said the two stores will remain open until then. The Bureau of Indian Affairs says it will provide emergency funding to residents of Imanak, an Alaskan village struggling with high fuel costs. Niall Caesar, the BIA Regional Director for Alaska, made the announcement February 20th in Bethel during a visit with U.S. Senator Mark Begatch of Alaska. Caesar said the BIA has agreed to waive eligibility rules so more people in Imanak can get up to $1,000 in fuel assistance depending on a person's income. The average person will get about $500. Begich said it's not a long-term solution, but a step in the right direction. Caesar said his office is requesting the wa waiver be made available to 56 villages in western Alaska and to 11 villages in northwest Arctic. Uh, if I remember right, uh, this was a community that uh, up until last month was paying around $8 a gallon for its gas, and one individual indicated that they had, uh, out of an income of about $1,700, had paid out almost $1,400 in, uh, in fuel costs, leaving uh, very little to feed the family. Democratic Senator Tim Johnson said he's forwarded to President Obama his recommendations for filling three federal positions in South Dakota. Johnson said he recommends Elsie Meeks of Kyle, South Dakota, as the USDA Director of Euro, uh, Rural Development, Craig Shoneman of Aberdeen as State Director of the Farms Service Agency, and Randy Seeler of uh, Pierre as U.S. Marshal. Certain federal jobs are filled by presidential nomination and Senate confirmation. There's usually a chance when a, uh, there's usually a change when a new president takes office. Meeks is an enrolled member of the Oglala Sioux Tribe and has 20 years of experience working in Native American economic development. She is the first Indian to serve on the U.S. Civil Rights uh, Commission. 
Seeler has been an assistant U.S. attorney for 14 years. He has practiced law in federal, state, and tribal courts and served as a special judge for the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe. First Nations Capital Partners, FNCP of California, announced its first acquisition. Able Card Corporation, a maker of plastic cards in Duarte, California. The deal will keep Able Card Co Corporation at its facility near Los Angeles, preserve jobs for over 50 employees, and enable expansion and entry into new markets. Terms were not disclosed. FNCP, the first inter-tribally controlled private equity fund in the United States, invests in profitable companies with experienced management in niche markets. Investors include the Wells Fargo Community Development Corporation, CDC, the Calusa Indian Community, and the Rickon Band of Louisiana Indians and private individuals. The majority of the investors' uh, capital contributors are Indian tribes and tribal enterprises that want to diversify their investment portfolios. This investment by First Nation is an example of Wells Fargo's commitment to small business development and community economic development, said Bob Taylor, head of the Wells Fargo CDC, who helped start the fund with Wells Fargo's capital injection in April of 2008. Rincon's investment shows our commitment to the development of California's economy and to the management of Able Cards, said Bo Mazzetti, chairman of the Rincon Band. This is only the first step in our econo economic diversification strategies with our partners at First Nations. Lawmakers have approved putting $30 million toward the cost of a major expansion of North Dakota's Heritage Center. The State House voted 57 to 35 February 19th to set aside the money. Next, the North Dakota Senate will consider the spending bill. The project's total price tag is $52 million. Supporters of the Heritage Center are trying to raise money for the project. They're counting on state, federal, and private money to pay for it. It will include a cafe, children's galleries, a theater, and a special display about the history of American Indians on the Northern Plains. Come celebrate women in all their glory April 16th at uh, St. Kijitans at uh, Metropolitan State College in Denver, Colorado by participating in a free day-long symposium. Wise Women of the Southwest is a collaborative effort between the Colorado Folks Arts Council and Metro State College who have been awarded a Colorado National Endowment for the Humanities Grant for 2009. This is all open to the public. Included in the day-long events will be panel discussions about wise women and the role of elders in society, a sacred made of pottery display by Arizona Potter and Zapf, community information booths, workshops with corn mothers and corn maidens, and a grand fiesta featuring L.A.-based artist Michael Heralada with his award-winning Aztec Stories performance. Dr. Roman Del Castillo of Metro State College has been selected as lead scholar, and adjunct professor Christina Siegel will co-host the event. Families are encouraged to attend and table spaces available for nonprofit organizations. If you want more information, you can call 720-329-0869. And that is the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank all our underwriters for helping us with this broadcast and welcome you aboard. Come again and watch in as we give you the news roundup from around Indian Country.